Okay, so this is a 5170 that I've built recently. Um, there's quite a few problems with building this. I'll get to that in a minute and just hear it spin up. Now I put VGA on it just for convenience. This is one of my cool favorite little drives right now, the Cyquest cartridges. So you just push them in like that and then secure that down and then it'll spin up. I got a memory error. <laughs> Lovely. It hasn't done that since the entire time I've built it, but of course now that I'm videotaping it's going to have an error. Now one thing you will notice is that it has a third drive bay and that panel's wrong and that's because it's actually not a 5170. Um, it does have a 5170 badge, which is quite old, um, but yeah, it definitely isn't. Now the problem I had with this was that I bought a genuine IBM 5170 motherboard, it's the Type 2, so it's that extra 5 or so centimeters wide, which means it needs to go underneath the power supply. And the only power supplies you can get with that dent in them, the fan doesn't line up with the back of the standard case. So I ended up taking a dead full size AT power supply, um, installed a more modern um, AT power supply from a uh, circuit board from a, uh, an old Pentium I had that was dead. Um, got that board in there nice and fitted and then I had to take an angle grinder to the old AT power supply case so that there was a hole big enough for the motherboard to fit into. Now it's all secured and safe and set up and now as a result we have this. This is a genuine IBM 5170 on the inside. The expansion cards don't match but the floppy drive is from 5170. The case badge is from 5170. It looks like a 5170 for the most part. And um, yeah, this is the best I could do without spending $350 on postage. So we can see here that it's loaded up DOS and it's picked up my SCSI drive. I uh, got an Adaptec 1542, I think, in there. So let's see what we've got on our SideQuest cartridge. Our files. Now I built a new tweener with a SideQuest drive, so I'm using this to copy my stuff over. And I've left most of them as zip files by the look. Let's see if we can run fast links. Yeah. Now the cool thing with these SideQuest drives is, especially on a 286, they run just as fast as the hard drive and it's actually got more storage. Uh, the hard drive I used in this is a, is a Winchester of the time period. Uh, it's an NEC D5126. 20 meg MFM and yeah I like using the original drivers just because you get the sound and you get a realistic speed so yeah so that was running straight off the uh, SideQuest drive there which is pretty cool um, and this little machine here has got 640k of RAM and 2.5 and megs of extended um, I fitted it with a Everex um, 3080 RAM Deluxe it's pretty hardcore it's got is it 12 banks of memory on it and each bank is I think it's either 9 chips or 18 chips um, but yeah it's the full height of the case full length and it's just row and row and row and row and row of chip um, but yeah this little guy works well and we have actually got a copy of the original AT diagnostics uh, rebooting shall be tricky uh, just because I have my fake Model F AT clone keyboard and doesn't have the can't sort of go control or delete with one hand. So a bit of floppy. What was also awesome about this machine is I used my original OEM MS DOS 5 install discs. Uh, I just yeah I find it awesome just to use original media. This monitor of course is from a PS2. Here you can see it's identified the motherboard. It is a genuine IBM part. Um, if you're not familiar with the 5170, you'll really want to make this disc because um, the tools on this are very, very useful. Everything from low-level formatting, all that sort of stuff. 
So cards I've got in here, um, I do have a uh, Soundblaster Pro, I have a 1 meg VGA card which is just silly overkill, we've got the RAM 3000 Deluxe, uh, the SCSI card from Adaptic, um, and the hard drive and floppy are provided by a Western Digital proper 16 bit card, so we've got a nice high IRQ. I uh, got a twin serial port adapter in there as well, but we've got no parallel because I actually ran out of uh, I.O. cards, which is weird because I had boxes of them, but I couldn't find one with parallel that didn't have a shorted capacitor or didn't work or... Yeah, so maybe I need to dig some further. But this is my lovely AT. I'll just show you how these uh, SideQuest drives unlock. We just push that button, we wait for it to spin down, you hear it go chunk when it's ready. There we go and then we just pull this lever and out she comes and I can take this next door and throw it in my Pentium Windows 98 picks these up perfectly and I can copy more stuff to it if I want to so yeah that's about it um, I would pack the hard drive but I don't have the tool on there yet there's it the little lights you see the turbo one's a little bit irrelevant the other thing I found when I built it um, was that the power connections on the motherboard that run those LEDs for some reason on my board uh, they're only producing about one and a half volts and these lights wouldn't light up so I've actually well the hard drive light runs off the controller it's fine but the power light I actually had to wire into one of the five volt connectors on the power supply and solder a resistor in line so there's a lot of work that's gone into this little beast and yeah it's really the best I could do on the money this little brother's next door. Actually, I wasn't planning on doing this, but let me see if the 6150 wants to fire up. If you haven't seen one of these. Oh, here we go. When it hits 15, you'll hear the hard drive kick in. By 15, I actually meant 14. We don't really need the maintenance to skip today. It, it, yeah, it's just hard to explain to you the size of this thing. It weighs around 30 kilos. Still nothing on the screen. Still doing self tests. Got a 300 meg ESDI hard drive in the back and room for two more, although it really doesn't like extra drives. I believe there's a problem that IBM had with their 300 meter drives, it was very specific so it was hard to add them. And up here we've got the original tape drive which has a melted cap stain, which dirtied one of my tapes pretty badly. Oh, we're ready for boot. <clears throat> so now it's going to load the VRM, which is sort of it's almost like a um, virtual machine type thing sort of going on. Basically it boots the VRM that prepares the hardware and then it loads the operating system after that. So it takes a few seconds to start that. And I think we'll be booting in a second. Almost ready for boot. There we go, AIX version 2.2.1. Uh, this little beauty has uh, got a text only IBM uh, graphics card, it's got the tape controller card, um, it's been upgraded to the Model 135, so it's got the high speed memory and CPU. Well, I believe so. I'll need to double check that. Uh, 1.2 meg floppy, 300 meg SDI, and the the party piece has 17 serial ports and I've got the driver disk to run the card as well it takes a very long time to start and this particular old girl actually uh, ran a whole bunch of terminals ran an entire office here in Wellington before it ended up in someone's garage and came to me um, it has gone bang on me on two occasions um, but they were just the two mains filters going
I can hear the hard drive moving so I know it hasn't crashed. It's just taking its time. Now my, while we're waiting, my biggest concern with this machine here is if the hard drive fails. I have two spares, um, but I, I, I really need to put the spares in as primary drives and try to install AIX on one of those just to make sure that I've got a backup for keeping it running. Now the error in device configuration is because I reinstalled the VRM and I think I made some mistakes because I was trying to configure additional hard drives. Yeah, so I've got to repeat the process but it takes a very long time so... Okay, we're booting now I think. Properly. Are we still, no, we're still verifying. This is very, very painful. We do have all the original books of this machine too which is quite cool. And so next to it there on this little table is a Star LC printer. And I went and bought a brand new ribbon from a company in New Zealand who was apparently importing them from China for almost nothing. And the new cartridge was as bad as the old one. Very frustrating. I would show you what else is next door, but uh, yeah, it's a bit of a mess in here at the moment, to be honest. Oh, we're booting. There's the serial port card initializing. And there's the errors from my hard drive configuration. Uh, I tried to set it up for terminals that weren't there and I put the, ran the driver just twice and... You also see it loads the TCP IP stuff, that's because it's got a network card in it as well. Just takes a normal transceiver out the back. And I cleared the root password. And there's our command line. Now this is a Model M keyboard. You notice the action key. And it's actually got a speaker built into it as well. I don't think any of the other keys are different. Everything looks the same to me, just, just the action key. Uh, shut down. No, I won't make you sit through this. this. This actually takes a long time. It tries to kill the process. There's a process that doesn't want to shut down. It complains about it and then it finally finishes. Uh, clean AIX install, I'll probably sort that out. Nice and quick smart. And his little buddies next door. Yes, that's it. I'm just going to let this finish shutting down and then I'll power it off.